good morning everyone and thanks very much for sparing the time to uh to log on today so as vivian said i'm going to kind of go through um some slides some ideas i've said 20 marketing ideas but i'll give you lots of case studies and things i've seen that have worked in various places um so as as vivian said you know feel free to answer ask questions um, through the chat function. Um, and um, let's kick off. So um, the main idea of this session really is to help you find ways to tell customers that you exist, remind customers that you exist, um, and increase sales through doing that. Um, so most of the ideas will cost you time, but not much else. Um, and some of, you know, some of them you'll need to adapt a bit. They won't all be relevant for all businesses. Um, so the first thing um, I wanted to talk about was actually being able to articulate what makes you special. Um, so. I'd suggest a kind of strap line or a very short sentence um, that really spells out what's different about you, what is important about your business, why should customers shop with you? Because if you can't get that into a short and sweet sentence, you won't be able to do that with your marketing and your customers won't get it either. So I'd strongly encourage you to think about how you what that strap line is what really sums up the essence of your business because that's why um, people shop with independence is because you've got something extra and different um, so i've got some golden rules of marketing as they apply um, to independent retail um, and the first one which um, might pain you to think this but even regular customers people who like you people who've had a good experience shopping with you they forget you exist and i mean that's particularly true at the moment when a lot of people aren't going into town as much they're maybe not driving past or walking past your shop um, and so you need to kind of keep reminding them about you and what you've got or maybe they've you know, shop with you in the past, bought something from you, and they've been aware of that particular product, but they, they didn't actually register the other things you sell. Um, you know, you know you've, what you sell, but customers don't are quite focused and they maybe only notice, you know, the thing that they bought last time. And then once we've established they need reminding, it's worth saying that most people don't register a message um, until they've actually heard it six times. So it kind of maybe will go in vaguely first of all, but it will take five or six times before they actually connect, you know, the name of your business with what you're doing. Um, and it's worth actually using different mediums to tell them the message different times of day different days of week um, so don't just tell them you're now selling yoga mats and clothes once you know put it on facebook tweet it have something in your window put it on your website send out an email or a little newsletter um, you know, kind of, it all builds up and helps that message to go in. And then my third kind of golden rule is make it human. Um, the, this is particularly true with independent retailers. People know you, they've talked to you when they bought stuff from you. They read your Facebook posts, they read your emails or whatever. Um, and they are interested in your story. They're interested in you. Um, you know, they want to know a bit more about, you know, why did you set up health food shop? What's your hot tip for relieving their arthritis pain? Or what's the story behind those lovely Indian greeting cards you've got with elephants on that are made by a women's cooperative or whatever it is, you know, they, they're interested in that. 
and if you can make it kind of cute and funny as well, that's even better. Um, so, you know, nice photos. For example, um, Smokery, Smoke Salmon Place near me, they send out a regular newsletter. And a couple of weeks back when most of the country had snow, but we didn't round here, they sent a lovely photo through of their children on an indoor um, cardboard bobsleigh run down their stairs which had all the smoked salmon cobble boxes making the bobsleigh run. Um, cute kids, it reinforced the brand message and you know, made it human. So, um, so think about how you can do, do that. I mean, at the moment, um, I'm guessing most of your businesses, you're locked down, so you're not able to open unless you're food or essential businesses but I still think it's important to look like you're still in business um, and you're not shuttered up or you haven't got your Christmas stuff in the window still so this is just a, a recent photo of my local um, card and gift shop and she's done a lovely display of current merchandise um, and she's got a little sign she hasn't got a transactional website but she's got a little sign in the window telling you how you can buy things from her um, and she's doing click and collect. So kind of it makes people have a bit of confidence in you and you know make sure the window's clean, the door's clean, it all looks tidy um, just so people don't forget about you. Now I know things are changing a lot at the moment so it, you probably are thinking you can't do long-term planning, but I am a great believer in having a kind of monthly plan for your marketing. So sort of four to six months out. Um, now this is an example of one I've been working with a, an independent department store. Um, and they're going to use, or they're using each theme of these themes for their social media, um, they're using it for um, their, their shop windows when they can open, um, for their newsletter, they're using this on their website. Um, now, you don't need to stick to the plan religiously. You know, things change, something becomes more topical, more relevant. So bump the idea you had, first of all, put the new one in and you can, you can carry out that theme. Um, you know, the next month or the month after that. Um, and I think just recording it, you know, even if it's just on a notebook somewhere, on a spreadsheet, helps you start thinking as you're going through daily life about things that would be a good topic. Um, you can pinch them from other retailers, maybe when you're talking to friends or, um, or family, you know, you'll come up with something like this. So, for example, um, last year I was working with an independent um, vintage bridal and evening wear retailer and I was standing outside the shop with um, the owner and they had a lovely um, wedding dress in the window and one of her regular evening wear customers walked past and admired the dress and told us that it was so lovely that she was tempted to propose to her long-standing partner who she'd been living with for years just so that she could get married and wear the dress um, and after she'd gone you know the owner and I got chatting and we said we should do it was 2020 we should do a leap year why not propose and wear the wedding dress promotion which was really successful I mean obviously because of the pandemic it, a lot of those weddings didn't happen, but it generated a lot of publicity and that was just a kind of chance comment from um, a customer. Now, the, the next thing I want to talk about is um, a customer game. So I think it's important that um, you really think about who your target customer is. And so what kind of marketing messages, um, how do you communicate with them in the way that's most appropriate for them? Um, so 
the way this game works is um, everyone who works for you, ask them to find pictures and photos of people who look like your customers. So they can get them from anywhere you want. And I would aim to get maybe 60 or 80 photographs in total. Um, so you can either do this as a Zoom session, or if you're a family business, it could be a sitting around the, the kitchen table um, situation. Um, and sort those photos into maybe four, five or six customer persona. So like groups of a customer type. Um, so this is just an example I'm going to go through for a DIY re retailer. We did this exercise on. Um, so you need to give them each persona a name and then start thinking about their lifestyle. So um, this is Burton Vi um, and um, these are the, this is what they look like, this, these are the photos we kind of put together for them. Um, so put together a profile for them. So have a think about their age, think about their lifestyle, what their financial situation is, and also their purchasing pattern. So you need to kind of really get under their skin and think about what their priorities are and how they spend their time and their money. And then once you've thought about it from their perspective, then think about it in terms of, well, what do they want from you and your business? So what is it about your brand that is important to them? What products do they need? Um, and what are the things about those products that you need to think about? Um, so, for example, in this case, you know, because they're older, you know, maybe they need clear instructions with large print. What do they need from um, your staff? and the, the service that you're giving them. What is it about the shop that's going to be important? Um, and then once you start trading again, um, hopefully in April, pick a couple of weeks where um, you record, you say you have your four or five customer persona on a little sign by the till, and you use a five, five bar gate system and actually record how many people come into your shop and which and buy something and which of the customer persona they fall into. Or depending on your business, you could actually record the amount of money they spend with you each time. And then after about two weeks, add it up and find out which is your most important customer group. You know, is it Burton Vi, for example? Um, and because they're the biggest group, think about them first. Think about um, what sort of marketing is going to appeal to them most. You know, so say, for example, with Burton Vi, it might be you're not going to be thinking Twitter and Instagram. You're going to be thinking more emails, good promotions, maybe a customer loyalty program. Um, and also think about your range and the products that you're offering in terms of their appeal to each of the customer persona, because people often find that they buy for what appeals to them and not um, necessarily the people who are spending most in their shop. Um, you know, you tend to buy for the more glamorous customer or people that you relate to more. Um, so, so that's quite a good fun way of getting people in your business to start thinking about customers and how to market and, and sell to them more effectively. Another thing you might want to think about is running some online events, um, as some people have got more time for those. So this was um, an example I picked up from a retailer in Brighton. and. Um, what they're doing is they're charging $24.95 for you to buy the nipple tassel um, kit and then you log on and they have a Zoom session which shows you how to make the nipple tassels. They promise you a good fun evening um, and they do demos on how to twirl the tassels once you've made them. Now, 
seems to me quite high margin. It's a few sequins and tassels, but quite a nice way of making an event out of something and, and keeping, um, keeping the business going. Or maybe you've been running events um, for people in person, you know, before the pandemic, and maybe you can adapt those. Um, so, for example, um, hardware DIY retail I've worked with um, runs sort of repair cafes um, where they invite people to come in with things that they need mending, and the people can, you know, get some expert advice from their team, and they obviously sell the tools to repair them, the cleaning kits or whatever. Um, now that could be done online. Um, in a little kind of workshop tutorial type thing. Um, so have a think about what you might be able to do and don't think of it as a failure if you don't get to as many people as you expected logging on. Um, because the fact that you've bothered to invite someone has reminded them that you exist. They might be quite flattered that you've invited them to something. Um, and it just kind of reminds them about, about you and what your skills are. Um, so it's you don't just measure it in terms of the number of people that come along. Think of it also in terms as an opportunity to remind people what you're kind of what makes you special. Um, obviously, for online events, you'd be needing to um, to get people to register with their email address and names and so on. Um, but maybe you could also use personal invitations um, and put them in online orders when you're sending them out. Um, so, you know, make it a bit special for people, you know, make it look like a proper invitation to a party type thing. Um, and I'd say you need a three to four week run up even for online events. So um, what we're going to do now is to go into breakout rooms. Um, before we do that, I just want to explain a bit about what I'd like you to do. Um, so it's, it's important when you're, um, when you're closed, when you're locked down, to be able to give people an indication of how they can still buy from you, even if you haven't got an online website. Um, so what I'd like you to do in the groups is just have a think about what are the things that you would include in a notice on your door about how to spend money with you when you're locked down. Um, so this is an example here of something that was on my local department store's door, just as an example, so you know the kind of thing I'm talking about. Um, so we've got about seven minutes so um, have a think about um, have a think about that in your groups and then we'll report back after that okay well shall I go through some of the things that I thought were worth talking about um, so I thought if we're just looking at this example here I thought the hatchers um, having their logo and their colour scheme is good because that helps reinforce your brand. Um, I think having a QR code there makes it easier for customers, so that's quite useful as well. Um, I like the fact that there's a list here of the things that you can buy, because in this particular case, it's not the whole range that's online. Um, it's important to have a website. I would say it's also would be good um, to have a phone number because some people would prefer to phone up or email. Um, in this case, they're actually doing free local deliveries. And I think it probably would have made sense for them to actually say that. Um, and also, if you offer click and collect, um, you know, put that on. Um, I'm guessing that a lot of you um, will have products that are relevant for Mother's Day. 
Um, so maybe it would be sensible to actually have some examples, some photos of Mother's Day, Day gifts um, and suggest that people can, can buy those from you um, just to make it topical and give people a kind of call to action. Um, I seem to have now lost seeing everyone. Um, so has anyone got anything they'd like to add to that? No, I can't um, see. In, in, in our group, Fran, yeah. um, Johnny was talking about having a QR code and he's done really well out of that. And I didn't realize that you can get a QR code for free over Google. Yes. Yeah, well, that's good. Good to hear um, that someone's had some success with that. It just makes it easier for people, doesn't it? They get the phone out and they're away. It obviously depends on your audience. And I yeah. think it gives a good message to a particular kind of an audience. I could see that working quite well for the good parts because um, it's, it's, you know, we're, we're quite complex offering in some way, certain ways. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sorry, and just, just to add to the, the, the hatches thing, you know, maybe have the uh, brand logos that they stock would be a quick identifier for people if they, um, you know, particularly like a Bosch or a Mila. Yeah. That's a really good idea. Yeah, no, like that. Anything else? And maybe even images of, of the products as well, because it was quite text heavy. And if someone's just like walking past, how likely are they to, the, to, to really read it? Sort of, yeah, so like logos and images, like, oh, then it'll remind you, oh, I need to buy a kettle or whatever the next time you walk past. Yeah, that's really important. And I think you register much more as you're walking past if you see a photo or a logo, don't you? You don't stop to read, it's too small. So yeah, I completely agree with that. Thank you. pictures of people as well um i don't know whether it's worthwhile considering putting a picture of yourself because it's a message from you if if you are a small local business um and then maybe someone might be drawn to it because they just see your picture yeah that's the going back to the making it human and making it personal yeah yeah i think that's a good idea and it's kind of a give me a call email me kind of thing makes them feel like they could get a personal shopping experience from you. Anything else anyone came up with in their groups? Okay, well, Thank you for that. That was that was great. So let's just go on to the a few more ideas to, <laughs> to kind of throw at you. Um, I mean, we've already talked about um, encouraging using your shop front to make people realize you're still in business um, and encouraging people to come inside when they can. Um, generally speaking, you've got about 20 seconds as people walk past you. Um, for your shop to register with them. So it's worth thinking about some improvements now. Um, clear signage is vital. Um, this is an example of a lovely shop called Irregular Choice. They sell shoes and accessories um, in North Lane in Brighton. Um, and it often gets photographed and posted on social media. So they have a lot of, of tourists and and day trippers who do their marketing for them. Um, now, obviously, that's not always relevant. Um, you can't always do something like that. But have a think about your window display. Um, Francis, you're not sharing your screen. Oh. Um, okay. Let me see, because I've kind of lost. Right. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. Um, Right, I'm not quite sure how to. Ah, oh. here we are. Okay. 
If you, there's a, a green yeah, share screen. If you can't, I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of. Right, is that okay? Yeah. That's great, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so this is, this is a lovely shop front. Um, so that was what I was talking about. Um, and another example, um, that I was going to share with you, um, a lingerie department, a lingerie retailer I was working with, um, the, the owner persuaded three of her friends to model the lingerie in the window in a kind of live display. Um, so they did it, uh, they only did it for about an hour or so. Um, and they got the little crowd outside the shop. Um, they got, they stopped the traffic they got featured on the local radio and it was a really kind of good way to just draw attention to the business and they all had a bit of a laugh and had a glass of Prosecco or two to while they were doing it so that might not be appropriate for you but you know have a think about ways you can kind of make an impact um yeah Alison um I think we did have Jane Llewellyn in the group. I don't know if she's still there. Um, and I just wondered whether you could get away with a shop front like that in the conservation area in Froome. <laughs> so Fran, if you haven't got the answer, Jane might, who's our... Who's I our, I'm in tour today, actually. I'm not too sure about that. But. Uh, I, I, think, um, I think if you were to ask Mendip Planning Department the question, they would say that that materially affected the appearance of the building and therefore that would need planning permission <laughs> <laughs> if you ask them but you know obviously i would advise you always yeah, to we, check <laughs> we, we, we've painted our facade lime green and we're keeping our fingers crossed about that so this might be a stretch too far thanks ever so much sorry to interrupt oh well, no that's yeah that's another great way of doing it yeah um most of the independent retailers that I've worked with have um, changed their shop window about once a month and done quite a significant change then. Um, now, it, depending on how often your customers come in, I would say try and make some changes at least on a weekly basis. Now, you know, I'm, I don't want you to be, you know, spending all your time window dressing, but even if it's just something like, moving something that was on the right hand side of the window to the left hand side of the window or you've got a display of orange mugs swap them out for blue ones just so that it registers a slightly different and it's not kind of like wallpaper when people are walking past every day for a month um so have a think about that um and maybe have some um leaflets in a weatherproof holder with a little lid on so that people can take a leaflet and you know they've got a reminder of your brand your opening hours and your website um it sounds obvious but customers like all of us are quite lazy um so you do need to make things easy for them um so i say never just say 50 percent off actually tell them what the price that they pay is which i know is more effort on ticketing but even when it's half price people don't do the sums very easily or put together a gift pack for them or find the battery that goes with the toy they're buying or the white spirit with the gloss paint or whatever um, think about having you know an easter gift or a mother's day section on your website you know it's a repeat of what you've got there already but it will help people find something more easily um, and do the work for them and there's always kind of hidden opportunities um, so an example a retailer that I've worked with this is obviously before the pandemic um, selling clothing to older larger ladies and they used to do a lot of fashion shows in care homes um which was really successful because it's a group that don't get out as much um so what they do is they take in extra stock into the care home 
and they would um, let people buy that um, and take orders after the show. But they'd also um, incentivize the care home staff so that they would order for the ladies throughout the year and they get some kind of incentive. Um, and then the shop staff would go in and make the deliveries to the care home, you know, make it a more personal experience for the ladies in the care home, build up a relationship, and then they would be suggesting what would go with things that they would bought previously and so on. Um, or maybe you're selling furniture and carpets. Could you work with a local estate agent um, who they know who's moving into the area and have some kind of incentive for the estate agent to pass on to them. Um, and obviously, if you've got a group of local businesses that put together a new to the area pack, um, that works even better. Um, and also, if you incentivize the estate agent in some way, reward them for passing your details on, that helps as well. Um, it's also worth saying it's not good enough just to say you're in New Street or something, you know, people need to know that you're opposite the library or, you know, by the Red Lion pub or whatever it is. Tell them where they can park or where the cheapest place to park is or, you know, where there's on stream park, on street parking or whatever. So think about sort of ways of getting to people that other retailers aren't getting to. Now we've talked about themes for planning um, your marketing. Um, the bookshop example here. Um, so there's there's books to read now. Game of Thrones is over. So books in the same kind of genre. And then they also did a promotion which was read it before you see it. So um, books that have been televised um, or made into a film you know read the book of it before you before you watch it um so a new way of actually actually merchandising and promoting um so or think of another theme i'm i'm i've been working with um a card and gift shop retailer um and most of his products are really very small and didn't really make much of an impact in the window so um, what we did was put together a unicorn themed window. So balloons, greetings, cards, gift wrap, ornaments, mugs and so on. And it made much more of an impact because there was that that unicorn theme. And it literally did stop little girls in the street and <laughs> get them to come in with their parents. Your regular customers are really, really important. Um, it's a general rule, but it applies to virtually every business I've ever worked with. That 80% of your business comes from 30% of your customers. Um, so reminding existing customers about you and encouraging them to spend again is generally the most effective way to increase your sales. Um, so it's all about repeat and referral custom. Um, and another kind of golden rule, which seems to apply to most businesses, that it actually costs five times more to attract a new customer than it does to keep an existing one. Um, so, you know, that kind of stresses the importance of, you know, sticking with your regular customers to try and increase sales as the easiest way. You've obviously got to get new customers as well. Um, another idea is um, a refer a friend scheme. So um, in the case of this hairdressers, um, they found that it's unlikely at the moment, I'd love a haircut, but um, in normal times, um, October is their quietest month. Um, people have come back from their summer holidays, they haven't got any, any money and they're kind of planning to get their hair done before Christmas. So they came up with a referral scheme where their customer had to have their hair cut in October and they referred their friend who needed again to have an appointment in October. 
So the friend got 40% off their hair appointment. And then once the friend had been in and the customer came back, they got 40% off. And this is haircuts. Their average transaction value is £80 in this salon. Um, so the key things about that are that it all had to be done within a limited time frame, because if you give people too long, they never get around to it. And the incentive had to be quite big. So this was 40%. And in this case, the salon increased business. They got 50 referrals by doing that in one month, just in one salon. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the idea there is that if you're getting people's friends, they're similar to your regular customers. So um, they're likely to be kind of the right fit for your business. Um, and another way to increase sales is to sell more to your existing customers. So that's kind of thinking about add-ons in your business. So there's three kind of types of add-ons. They can either be related items. So things that like the scarf that matches the top. So it kind of completes the look or enhances the use of it. Um, and then there's value added items. So the things that would increase the value or the lifespan of the original product. So that might be something like if you're selling garden furniture, a winter cover so that people can keep it outside, um, selling that at the same time. And then probably the most important one really is impulse items. So it's something that's totally unrelated, but you lay your shop or your website out so that something catches people's eye and they buy something else as well. Um, so have a think about, I mean, at the moment, it's going to be more about your website. Have a think about how easy it is for people to make those add-on items. Have you got, um, you know, you show them the earrings. Are you also making it easy for them to buy the necklace that goes with it as a bundle? Um, you know, just think about sort of making it easier for customers to, to identify something that they like. Emails are useful in communicating directly with your customers. And actually, we were talking about this in our um, breakout group earlier. Um, I would strongly suggest a frequency of, um, of monthly to start with and, and make that regular. Um, have something on your website where people can sign up um, for, um, for going on your mailing list, maybe give them 10% off their first order with you. Um, when your shop's open, I think it's a nice idea to have little slips by the till. So keep them simple, but just have you know, ask for their name and their email address, tell them what they'll get. So tell them maybe it's a monthly newsletter with a style update or a selection of recipes or whatever's relevant to your business. And then just tell them that they can unsubscribe at any time. Um, now, none of the businesses that I've worked with, apart from two, I think, have had more than 2,000 um, names on their customer database and most email systems like MailChimp for example are free if you've got less than 2,000 customers but I'd say even if you've only got 50 start now and because it reminds those people that you exist and it kind of keeps them um, keeps them interested in what you're doing In terms of websites, um, I think a basic website is pretty much a must have. Um, now, this is an example of one which looks quite pretty, but it doesn't actually give you all the information you need. Um, I think it's good to have a picture of your shop so that people can actually see your business and kind of register, you know, the look of your business with what you're selling. Um, you need to have your address, telephone number, email address, 
or some kind of way of making inquiries, your opening hours, an option to be added to the mailing list. And going back to what I said about what makes you special, um, you need to articulate that. So what's why should they shop with you? Think about it in terms of what will they get out of the experience. And I think a nice way of doing that is to have a little customer quote, which sums up your what makes you special, but is expressed in terms of, you know, Fran from Taunton says, um, because that's more compelling than you actually, um, you actually spelling it out yourself. And then you might want to think about bringing your website up to the next level. Now, I'm not saying that a transactional website is the right answer for everyone, but it's likely most people find their sales increase by five, 10% once they get the website going. But there's an awful lot of effort in setting up products online, managing it, sending stuff out. Um, a shop that I've been working with, a department store again, um, in the November lockdown, he set up a little transactional website, didn't sell the whole line. And he basically devoted the whole of that November lockdown to fulfilling online orders. And he went out and delivered them himself. And he found at the end of it that the sales for the month were equivalent to a good Saturday in normal times. So he decided it wasn't worth it and he didn't do it. But, you know, a lot of people are finding it works well. Maybe you should try someone else's platform like eBay, like Amazon, like Truvi, Truva or Etsy, um, where they've got the structure, they've got the marketing and you can benefit from customers to other parts of the site. But obviously they take a big cut for, from you. Um, if you're not going for a transactional website, you might want to enrich your website in other ways. So have more information on it, you know, maybe have some top tips some videos, some recipes, some tutorials, you know, whatever is appropriate to your business and have some customer reviews there to give yourself credibility um, as well. Um, and also if you've got links, incoming links from other businesses that helps you get found on search engines better as well. Um, Now that there are some people, um, you know, people have obviously got less to do at the moment in certain situations. I think it's quite a nice idea to try and link your social media with things that people can be doing even in lockdown. So this is an example from um, a local gift shop and um, they posted on Facebook about the big garden bird watch that was run at the end of January and they used it to highlight They've got some lovely greeting cards and mugs with bird designs on it. So have a think creatively about how you can be reminding people about something they can be doing even in lockdown and promoting your fabulous products as well. Um, right, so we're going to have a second um, breakout groups now. Um, Hopefully, you've all had a think about and been reminded about some things that you maybe have done in the past, things that have worked for you as we've been going through this. So what I'm going to suggest for this, um, this group at this time is you share an idea with the rest of the group and maybe people will be able to adapt it or use it in their business. Um, or it could be something that went horrendously wrong that you want to share as a don't do this or what you thought you went what, what you thought you should have done differently so if we have again about seven minutes in our groups um and we'll do that okay right so hopefully you found that useful who would like to um share something that's come up from their group or a good idea or a bad idea that you talked about
In our, in our group, we talked a bit about putting messages in shop win in your shop windows and nice messages, so positive messages or even curious messages, ones that make you kind of look in. And, and if they're changing weekly, you know, the idea is you'll go back and see what the new message is and just trying to be as creative as possible with it. Yeah, that, that can be very effective, actually, because it sort of creates the dialogue and it's not overtly salesy. Yeah. Yeah, that human side, yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, I think you've, um, some of the things you've highlighted are very interesting and, and useful to everyone. Um, but we, we were saying that one of the issues is that when you're in the lockdown, it's slightly different, of course, but when, you, when you're up and running, doing this takes quite a lot of time and it's good to get off, you know, with a lot of enthusiasm, but if you're not careful, it all sort of withers on the vine. Uh, and you, but you've got to keep keep the momentum going over time and have a real discipline and um, a schedule about what you're going to do. Well, your six month program was a good idea. Like you know, every month you do a different initiative. But find you know, making sure you've got the time and you're doing it properly. Um, yeah, and I'd say it's better to start off with kind of you know, if you if you want to do something weekly, make you start off doing it monthly and keep up that consistency and then increase the frequency rather than set yourself up for failure by saying yeah. you're going to post daily and, and failing and giving up after a week. Yeah. Um, we will talk about that point. I have got a slide on that um, in the next, in the last bit. No, we're a, we're a hairdressing business. So we, most of our contacts are through Facebook, which we do on a regular basis. And I think I might be wrong. I think we've got five thousand people on there, something like that. Wow! I think I think that's something like five thousand. Yeah, so uh, we get to a lot of people. We've got three salons, not just in Froome, but. Um, oh, okay. Well, no, that's impressive, actually. <laughs> so um, yeah, so they they do get stuff out. I mean, I don't get involved day to day, but um, it uh, it's uh, it's interesting to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Maybe try that. Refer a friend. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about that. The forty percent sounds a bit rich, but. <laughs> well, they thought it was worth it. Yeah. yeah obviously, yeah, yeah. Because if you don't, if it's not a really big incentive, people can't be bothered to take part. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I see where you're coming from. I've made a note of it, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> any any other things that came out from your discussions? Well, there was just um. Uh, a, a website that Carol mentioned that I wasn't aware of for um for sort of makers and sellers on Etsy, which is um, a website called eRank, which um, is apparently a sort of uh, sort of, uh, for the most part free search engine optimization. Um, and Carol was saying that it's like really good for um, like to see where uh, what areas you can improve on, and you know how to bump your visibility up. Um, so I made a note of that. Um, I think erank.com or something like that. That's I'm getting a nod from Carol there. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was a good tip from Carol. Actually, Vivian, one thing we did talk about in our group was we thought it'd be quite useful if everyone could have a list of the people who participated today. I'm guessing for, you know, and contact details because it's obviously you can't change exchange business cards or anything. I presume because of GDPR, people would need to say that they didn't want to take part in that or something. But if we could do that at the end of the session, that'd be good. If, if anybody wanted to, I mean, they could say to me, they could put in the chat, if you just put in the chat, just to say, just a yes or a thumbs up to having your details shared, but at least the people who are at this point, some people have left, then we could definitely share their details in one email. If you want to say yes in the chat, some point between now and the end. That would be great. Thank you. Or, or, or a Facebook group, maybe, um, if one doesn't already exist, or if somebody knows of oh. a Facebook group with local um, businesses, it'd be good to um, to know which one everyone's on. Yeah, I was going to say at the end, which is it's great you provided me. I mean, there is there is a retail group. Um, so there's a from so from retail group. So um, and one of our councillors is the chair of it. So we're very supportive of the group. Um, and um, I mean, they did used to meet, they used to meet um, monthly, but that, that's had stopped with, uh, with um, lockdown. But actually what it does mean is they're much more active on Facebook. So if you, um, 
Yeah, so if you, I think the easiest thing is to find them on Facebook if you're on Facebook. So it's from, from retail group of put a request. And then once you get through to that, you can then also have a WhatsApp group, which is very active. And, and that's, that's got quite that's all independent retailers. And, um, and hopefully at some point we'll start meeting again, um, which, is, which was, it was a great way of yeah, uh, coming together, I think on a Tuesday evening. Anything else anyone wants to add? Um, I, I was just going to say, I was talking to Alison from uh, The Good Heart. Um, not that it's the, the hat that I've come to this meeting um, with, but um, I also organise Froom Window Wonderland, which is happening this weekend. Um, and we try, and under normal circumstances, and I know it's completely different this year uh, for the retailers, but um, I would normally be really trying to encourage the retailers in the town to uh, take part. It's a free thing to do. You know, you can you can do a window to help promote your own shop, basically, and do it however you like, really, um, or get somebody else in to do it or whatever. But you just sign up like anybody else, any of the residents in Froome um, to do a window display um, and then light it up over the dates that we're running it this year. It's it's tomorrow till Monday um in the evenings and everybody wanders around town um, several people i can see are nodding so they know they know kind of have heard of it or know what i'm talking about <laughs> but um but yeah it's a it's a good thing retailers uh shops businesses we're, we're it's open to everybody to take part and um and it's a free thing that you can do to try and help promote yourself i know it's a bit different this year and you know a lot of the shops aren't open and they might not want to to bother or have the time to and everybody's quite time strapped at the moment so um completely understandable but it's something that you know for future that could be in the diary because we do it at the same time this is the fourth year that we've run it and um and it's something that we're hoping that we'll carry on and we will do at the same time every year so something for that diary <laughs> that's that's a lovely idea and yeah kind of adds to the uh excitement of independent retailers in the town yeah yeah so. it's nice it, it sort of creates a bit of a buzz which is mm. good yeah okay anyone else got any ideas or oh, okay well let's i'll try to share my screen now <laughs> okay Right, so um, just on the final um, few tips here. Um, now, David was talking about kind of how it does take a, a lot of effort to um, to do the social media consistently and um, seriously. So really, I'm kind of saying try and think in terms of recycling content. So build on it you know if you use the same photos use the recycle the post on Facebook and make it into your email newsletter add it onto your website in the top tips section you know just kind of think of it in terms of when you're planning an activity take the photos develop the text and the post so that you can recycle as much as you can um, and then you've got back to my thing about six um, six hits. Then you've got six different ways of hitting your um, potential customers with the message. Um, another way of kind of reducing the strain on you. I mean, I've noticed with an awful lot of independent retailers, um, they don't tend to delegate that well. Now you might say you've got no one to delegate to, but um, you know, sometimes people who are working for you, you know, even if it's the Saturday girl or something, you know, a part timer who doesn't work very, very much, involve them in your business more. Um, maybe they'd be a good person to be doing some social media posts. Maybe you can be just using them as a sounding board to discuss ideas. Um, so what I would suggest is you set aside just five or 10 minutes once a week at a set time to either 
when you're open in the shop, you know, as you're getting ready on Friday morning or something, or in a Zoom session at the moment. So just have a chat about what new stock's coming in, what you've got planned for that week, what your social media posts are going to be, um, if there's any ideas of sort of things for business link-ups with other businesses or things like the window um, display that you need to be participating in or whatever it is. Um, and the fact that you know that on Friday morning you're going to be having a chat about it helps you start thinking about it throughout the week. Um, it also sets that expectation with the other team member that you're going to be expecting them to come up with some ideas and you're going to be using their ideas so it makes their job more interesting um if you can't have a face-to-face -face or a zoom meeting you know maybe set up a whatsapp group for your entire team and make the expectation with people that they they need you know you're interested in their ideas they need to be thinking about ways to increase sales and improve your marketing um, or maybe it's a handover book in the shop where people write comments each day and not just complaints or customer information but you know have some creative marketing ideas in there um, and obviously in lockdown you know maybe you need to be doing this around the kitchen table with people in your household um, and don't underestimate the value of having someone who is outside the business um, thinking about it from a customer perspective. You know, use your kids and you know, your lodger or whoever to kind of think creatively about your business. And of course, it makes good sense to measure the effectiveness of everything you do. Um, so I would suggest that you have either a spreadsheet or a little black book where you actually record each of the promotions and marketing activities that you run. So you need to know um, what you spent on the marketing activity in terms of time and money. You need to know what the sales are of either the range of products that you are promoting or the sales for the whole business before, during and after the activity you need to make a note of anything that happened that may have affected the um, results of the activity so if there was snow if there was an election if they're digging up the street outside your shop just so that you know and can kind of recalibrate your information and then you can work out how effective it is and you can rank it compared to other things that um, you've done so you it, uh, so you the little black book or the spreadsheet acts as a reminder of other activities that you've done in the past and how you could update them for the future makes you make sure that you don't repeat the duds sometimes something quite interesting and glamorous doesn't have very good results and something that seems a bit more boring and pedestrian has better results will you know do those um and then this orange section here, the long term gain, that's the half life of the promotion. So it's the increase in sales, um, which kind of gradually goes down as the promotion ends. Um, and just be aware that that can be negative as well. Sometimes you can run things that make have a negative impact on your business and you obviously don't want to repeat those. Um, so. I thought it would be useful if you just spent a minute or so having a little recap on some of the ideas you've picked up. Hopefully everyone's got um, at least a couple of things, either a major change or some tweaks or some ideas. So just note down your action plan. We're not going to go through these. These are your own private ones. Um, and then while you're doing that, um has anyone got any questions anything anyone wants to to ask or discuss i mean if the, if it's something that's a kind of more you know personal private one 
I'm very happy to answer questions afterwards. I'll be putting up my contact details. Um, yeah, Alison. Um, this is this is just a question really to everybody. Um, we need to upgrade our website, which at the moment is um, a sort of homemade one using, um, oh, what's it called? The one that everybody uses beginning with W. Wix. Um, sorry? Wix. No, no, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll remember in a second. Um, so I just wondered whether anybody knows somebody in Froome can recommend someone in Froome who does that kind of stuff. And ideally, I'm thinking of um, somebody independent, um, obviously not expensive, who's quite flexible and who's going to stay around and can hold our hand as the website develops. So if anybody's got any details to put into chat, that would be brilliant. Thank you. I mean, I, I know someone, Alison, and he's got quite a good green element as well. So Ooh, uh, if you're happy, what I'll do is, um, I can't remember his name on top of my head, but I'll, I'll, I'll email it to you. Thanks ever so much, Vivian. Yeah. Brilliant. But if anybody else has got ideas, because I know that people get quite booked up, and my guess is that web developers probably have been quite busy um, over the last year, so I may have to approach a few people to find someone who can... Who can um, Alison, make sure you get somebody who's reliable, because in my experience, guys that work in these fields are sometimes good at what they do, but getting them to respond and to do stuff in the right time is quite difficult sometimes. Okay, thank you very much. It might be worth speaking to Johnny, actually, because he does his own. Right, but he probably doesn't want to do a second one then. <laughs> okay, thanks, Pauline. Stella Soft and Webzang. Um, I mean, if anybody's got a bigger one to do, um, when I worked for Fair Housing for Froome, we actually had a very good um, experience with Dentons in Westbury. Um, and we're really happy with the website that they created and they were very reliable. Um, not super cheap, but not as expensive as some of the quotes that we had. I, I've used Denton, I, we, I use Denton with the, with the in-house job I do and they are, they are good, but um, if you, uh, obviously I, I'm president of Froome Chamber, so I'm trying to promote Froome businesses. Stella, Stop, Stella Soft, I think our business uh, is a business that would build you a website Right. Websound um, will host it, but they're the green. They are they are very green. So. Okay, thank you very much. I'll follow them both up, Pauline and Vivian. I'd love to hear your recommendation. It was it was website actually, Alison. Okay. <laughs> it was yeah. <laughs> so, but, but do they design as well as host? Anyway, I'll find yes, it. Yes, I think he does. Yeah, and he's had a couple of talks, and he's one of the green element, Kieran. Okay, yeah. great, thank you. Any any other questions or things people want to discuss with the group before we finish? Okay, well, thank you all very much for, for sticking with it <laughs> for this session. Um, what I would suggest is, and you know, this is a time limited offer for you, um, start working on some of the action points that you've picked up from today. Um, I'm very happy to help you if you've got any questions, if you want me to review anything, help you prioritize, act as a sounding board, um, just give me a call or um, email me. Um, over the next week. Um, this is to try and persuade you to kind of get cracking soon. So, um, you know, I'd be very happy to, to answer questions or do anything I can, can to help you implement some of these marketing ideas. So good luck and thank you all very much for being such an interesting group with good ideas. Uh, it's been lovely. Thank you, Fran. Fran, thank you for your input. Um, it, it's been really good having somebody coming in externally to give us some advice as well and I just want to thank everyone for their time for joining us today so we, we do try and do some kind of monthly training or where we can in person events so uh, I mean I would suggest we've got a business bulletin that you can sign up for from business bulletin it's, if you go onto the from town council website there's a link on the business section to uh, get um, put your details in for the bulletin or I did send an email around yesterday as well so you should all now have my direct email so very happy for you to drop me an email and I can add you on to that list. 
Um, as I mentioned, we have got the retail group as well. So have a look at that on Facebook and, and you could join that group. But if you've got any problems joining it on Facebook, just again, drop me an email and I can get you on the WhatsApp group. And also we, we do work closely with Grim Chamber of Commerce. So um, we run joint events with them and it's worth exploring uh, their membership as well if you, if you want to know more about what they do. I know Pauline's here today, but um, have a look on the website as well. There are quite a lot of groups in for them. It's, it's an active town. so. We very much encourage you to get together and collaborate. Okay. Um, Vivian, how do we get a copy of the recording? So yes, yeah, so I will, It's uh, we're going to put it up on the website with the slides. Um, what I'm going to do is I've got an, an email, I've got emails of everyone who attended and also who couldn't attend, but who had registered. So once it's ready, it might just take a couple of days, we will probably put it up. Um, I'll send an email to everyone to say it's there um, <coughs> and that you can see it. Right. Okay. Well, unless there's any more questions, uh, I'd just like to say thank you for coming along and I hope you found it useful. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. And thanks, Fran. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Good everybody. To see you all. Bye. Yeah.